Good morning, good children of God. Welcome as we join together this morning in worship and praise of our Lord and Savior. Um, I would ask you please take a look at some of the announcements in the bulletin. First off, on the last page you'll see, have you noticed Pastor Dave sporting a gray polo shirt with our church logo? But we've given to our seniors, and uh, this year we're not doing that. Am I on, Paul? There we are. Um, we're not giving it out this year because most of the senior uh, girls have like five or six sweatshirts already, so they didn't need one more. Um, so they're getting uh, blankets, I believe, or, or quilts or something of that, something. Um, so, but they already have this, so if you'd like, I believe there is a sign-up sheet to purchase them. And uh, there are a multitude of colors you can get. So if you'd like one, please put your name on the list and we'll make sure we get you one. <clears throat> and they, as, like I said, it does come in uh, extra large is 30 and then someone made the joke last night, oh, that $2 extra for all the extra material? Hey, we didn't get it from Oshkosh Tent and Awning, so uh, we're, I'm good that way. Uh, also, my apologies this morning, I took the, the service from last night and transferred things over and adjusted things. I forgot to put an offering in. There will be an offering. Uh, it will be after the prayer concerns, before the scriptures. So just to let you know, uh, be aware of that. Obviously, there will not be a responsive uh, prayer. Um, I'll be doing that myself, it, it would appear, today. <clears throat> Unless, of course, at the end, you all want to scream Amen. We'll see how that works out for us. So, <clears throat> next, or this coming Saturday, we'll be uh, having a party to um, celebrate our graduates from high school. Today, that is happening today at 1 o'clock. We have five young ladies from the congregation who will be graduating. Jeannie Green, oh my goodness, uh, Ashley Brandle, um, what? Taylor and Emily Woleen, and I'm forgetting somebody, aren't I? Kennedy. Oh, uh, yeah, Kennedy Orcutt. Oh, and, and Ava Schmidt will all be graduating. Did I count, is that six now? <sighs> the wife's been gone for the weekend. It's not normal. And this is nine o'clock. Let's, you know, keep in mind, this is, it's like the time change that screws you up, right? Uh, although for me, it's, it's the after part. I'm used to going home and basically having lunch. Can't have lunch at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, unless, of course, you're having dinner at 3.30 and you're going to bed at 5. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, a little messed up today. So, but that uh, is this afternoon at 1 o'clock. We'll be, we'll be uh, honoring all of them as well as uh, Molly Williams and Ginny Cle Klecker. Thank you. Uh, Ginny Klecker, who graduated from college, Molly from uh, University of Minnesota Duluth, and um, Ginny from South Dakota State University, home of the Jackrabbits. Um, the only reason I know that is because after spending five years in North Dakota, South Dakota State plays North Dakota State, so that's how come I know the, the Jackrabbits, and of course North Dakota State is the bison, the thundering herd, whose colors are? No. Green and gold. Thank you, Bruce. So, and usually the, uh, the, the bison are usually pretty top of the list when it comes to football. Uh, Carson Wentz was from there, and I think the Packers drafted a guy this year, a lineman from out there? 
you used to have a running back. So there's a few. Um, while I was out there, I did not play for them. So, but anywho. Uh, but next Sunday following worship, we will have our family fun fellowship. I don't know, is that going to be inside or outside? Uh, the other issue we are, we are facing is that if, as you leave out here, go out the door, if you look right around the corner, there is a mother duck that has been sitting on her eggs for about three to four weeks now. Um, and um, she was very unhappy with me on Friday when I pulled my bike up and left it sitting there running. Thump, thump, thump. She didn't seem very happy at all about that. Um, the reason I couldn't turn it off is because I had to take it to town because the starter's going out. Anyone want to take a gander? What a new starter for a Harley Davidson is? Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, it costs $150 just for someone to look at it and say, yeah, that's a Harley Davidson. Um, so I had it sitting out here running and like I said, she wasn't happy. Hopefully by next week, it's about the time frame that she should be having her chicks this week. Um, I, 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 I had given my trail cam to Mount Morris to put out. I wish I had that now to put, put it on the, on the pillar out there to see when that happens. It'd be kind of cool to, because what happens is she has, they all hatch about the same time and then boom, they're gone. So. Uh, we do not yet, Rich, but if you'd like to get one, that'd be fine. Of course, by the time you get it, she'll probably be gone. That could be. Speaking of, of, of ducks and, um, uh, and birdies, uh, Bob Hinsman shot his fourth hole in one this past week. Someone tried to tell me that he threw it, but... I don't know if I could even throw that little white ball and get it into the cup uh, that far away. So I assume that was a par three, Bob? Well, don't make it sound so bad. Yeah. It's still an accomplishment, Bob. So what'd you shoot, what'd you shoot for the whole round then? What? Huh? Was this early in the day or late in the day? It was in the afternoon. I mean, I mean, in terms of your round. That was the last hole? Oh. Well, that would explain the 19th hole issue. I sent Bob a, a little a cartoon that said, uh, I forget what the couple is, the older uh, the couple in there, and she said, be careful of the beer hazard in the 19th hole. So um, for those who don't know golf, you won't understand it, but the rest of you will, so. Are there any other announcements this morning? Would you please stand and join me in our call to worship? <clears throat> in the midst of meaninglessness, in the midst of divisiveness, out of our brokenness, you call us to wholeness and a new life in the Spirit. In praise and thanksgiving, let us worship God. years 
Please be seated. Please join me in our call to confession, which you'll find in your bulletin. You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. With these words to Moses, God calls us to walk in newness of life, yet often we fall short. Let us confess together, merciful God. We confess that holiness is far easier to say than it is to do. Our words are pious, but mask attitudes of intolerance and judgment. Our concern for others is shallow, swallowed up by our own self-interest. We resort to platitudes of compassion and care, rather than change our actions to embrace those who are different or unlovely. This is not holiness, and we confess our failures to you. We confess we need your grace. Yes. We play. We need your power to change our attitudes and actions. Ignite within us passion and audacity. May we be holy disciples of Jesus Christ in the midst of a world filled with hateful attitudes, conflict, and rhetoric. God knows our frailties and looks upon us with compassion and mercy. We receive the gift of God's forgiveness with joy and thanksgiving. Alleluia. Amen. Under our prayer concerns, uh, please continue to keep uh, Sue Conrad in your prayers. Uh, Sue's surgery went a little longer than... Uh, they thought and was, was going to take and take a little more hardware in there, but she is home and doing well. Um, also, Tracy's back there. Yay, Tracy! So, and she's getting better slowly. Um, how, how did the party go last week with all that was going on? <laughs> I'll, I'll bet I, one, one, one wall I believe was Ashley's wall with all these ribbons and things from all her uh, all the competitions she's won with her her cow uh, over the years so a lot of stuff for her so congratulations to <laughs> Ashley on that um, they, they, the kids even said hi to me it was wonderful uh, so <laughs> um also, please uh, continue to keep our brother Ken Kloss in your prayers. Um, I saw Ken this past week, and he is, it's uh, difficult for him to breathe. Um, he takes nebulizer treatments a few times a day. Um, but please keep them in your prayers, the Kloss and family, as they move toward that day when he meets his Savior. Uh, Ken made the comment to me this past week that um, he says, uh, I pray for you. He says, I pray for all the pastors. Um, and I think about how many funerals I have done and wonder how many, how many Ken has done in his career uh, would be a multitude. So all the families that he has worked with, um, pastors he has worked with, um, it is uh, truly a, a, a wonderful life. Um, but please keep Ken in your prayers as they deal with this and as he goes through these days. Also, both Cindy Fani and Bob Hoyt are in atrial fibrillation. Um, Bob is supposed to be having knee replacement, but they won't do it until his AFib is taken care of. 
So um, they're working on that. But it's always something, is it? Um, other prayer concerns or joys? Don? I had a lady up in um, Minnesota that did that. She got two black eyes, and then the black from the eyes drained down her face. And it took like a month before all that color finally went out of her face. So it uh, could take a bit. Um, Deb, was there anything you wanted to tell us about? And if you'd like to see a picture. I have been. <laughs> <laughs> and where do they live? In Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where we were last month. Why would you have done that? Yeah, yeah. Why would you do that? Because there's, there's nothing better uh, I have found in my life than being a pillow. When you got a, a baby sleeping on you and you just... Ah, so it's really hard to do with my sons now. So would you please uh, take a moment? And, oh, I should mention one last, Bruce, this is your last week? The 12th. Canadian District Senate and then Eastern District is in June. Well, it is June now, duh, yeah. Are you headed up for that? You, you're no longer this, you know, that's, so that's your last, the last trip, yay for that. So Bruce has got about 10 days left on his tour of uh, duty or a horror, or whatever you want to call it. Um, eight years, Bruce? Uh, eight years as district president, and I think 13 years prior to that. How many years were you on district board? So Bruce has spent half, over half of his ministry uh, doing district ministry as well. So uh, congratulations to Bruce on that, and um, I'm not sure he's gonna know what to do with himself, um, once, once he's home eat in the evenings and able to see the brewers all the time. So, um, but congratulations to Bruce for that. And as many of you know, Bruce and I went to seminary together. Uh, Bruce and I have known each other since the 70s. We went to Chitek together in the mid-70s. So I played basketball against Bruce, baseball against Bruce, um, all these different years. And we ended up going to seminary together. And my one... I have many fond memories of Bruce at seminary, uh, but the one that uh, I remember was in our pastoral awareness class, uh, it's kind of a get to know each other, and I made the comment that I, that I, uh, I'll, I'll be one of the bet people thought that I was on drugs when I was at camp, and Bruce goes, I can tell you for sure there were people who thought you were smoking, smoking dope at camp. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, it has been uh, wonderful. Uh, with Bruce being here uh, and being able to serve him as well. So um, congratulations, though, to him to be able to move on a different aspect of ministry um, in the next few years. Would you please join me in a word of prayer? Lord, as we step into your holy place today, uh, we are reminded of the many places in our lives where you have touched us. Um, we are thankful for your servants who continue to work tirelessly for your kingdom. We especially remember our brother Ken and his family and for the work that they have done with so many families over these years and the ministry they have provided. May you continue to be with them, to comfort them, and to give them a sense of your uh, love and grace. We ask, Lord, your healing upon those who need a touch of your divine, um, those who are in need of, of just simply getting the, their bodies back 
someplace to where it is no longer sick. We thank you, Lord, for new life which comes into the world and for changing lives. Because we all, we all know there are points in our lives we can look back that were, that were points in our lives that we remember especially. We remember those who graduated both from college and who will graduate today from school, high school as they move on to a different aspect of their lives. Lord, bless us all today as we do our best to walk this great world you have created and placed us in. Bless us with your grace and your love. Amen. May we bring to God our morning tithes and offerings. this day we thank you for the joy we have of being in your kingdom we thank you for the joy of those lives that are a part of ours those people who help to make us see you in each and everything that we see in the world we ask Lord your blessings upon not only us but also these gifts we bring to you we ask that you use them to do your working of miracles in this world. Lord, bless us all this day with your love and grace. Amen. Please be seated. I'm sure that all of you were excited this morning when you looked at your bulletin and saw that I will be taking some passages from Leviticus, as it is always an exciting book. Um, actually, the, the discipleship class uh, did a couple, we did a few chapters of Leviticus, and they were kind of like, wow, um, there's a lot in Leviticus, the, the law, 
Um, and actually one gentleman years ago, he wrote a book, but he spent a year living biblically. Um, that meant taking all the passages from Leviticus and trying to figure out exactly how one should live their lives according to those. And uh, he said it was a struggle at times. Um, you know, he had to put down a list of things he, you know you could do and what you couldn't do. Um, so and he managed to do it, but um, a couple of the things I remember exactly were um, obviously no pork. Yeah, um, you're not supposed to roast your meat. You're supposed to boil it. Um, I think I'd be eating vegetables for a year. Um, and the other thing too was um, not having clothing with more than one type of fabric. So in other words, not having like uh, cotton and poly blend, it had to be only cotton or it had to be only this, so. Um, but yeah, luckily, what I'm gonna read for you today is not quite as hard, I hope. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. And from Luke's Gospel, and I'm going to uh, keep in mind I'm doing a series on the Lord's Prayer, and I'm going to actually stop at verse 4 rather than reading all the rest, um, because that's where the Lord's Prayer stops. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial.
last night I was uh, lucky enough to have Jeannie Green was here and she had pants that had holes in them. Um, actually, they, they, they were ripped, but they had like, um, there was fabric underneath it. So she said, well, you can't see skin. Um, but anyone remember that? Oh, I'm wearing my pants, these pants at church because they're holy. You ever remember that joke? Um, and I, I couldn't understand that, that whole um, fashion trend a while back here where, where everybody was wearing holy pants. I've had pants that were holy, but it wasn't because of they were bought that way. It was because I made them that way. I put my knee through a window at Mount Morris uh, during re at a retreat one time years ago. Um, my left knee went through a window. I, I slipped, and um, we went to Wild Rose to the little first aid station they got there. They call a hospital, and um, uh, this doctor kind of pulled a couple of pieces of glass out of there, and then he says, "You need a stitch." And as he says that, he took that needle and went boom, because. You need one stitch. What's the sense of freezing it? You either get a, a pick from you know, that or from, and I just about come off the table, of course, um, but I, I have kind of a numbness to my knee, but if you hit it just right, it's like you know, when you hit your funny bone, oh, it just uh, feels awful. Um, so that, that was a long, long time ago, but I wore those pants for a long time and you look where the rips were at, and you think to yourself, I thought to myself, if that had slipped a little bit further, it might have taken my kneecap all the way off, which would have been a little more than a stitch, I have a feeling. But, uh, yeah, and I, for some unknown reason, since I moved here, all of my long sleeve shirts that I wear quite often develop a hole in the left sleeve at the elbow. I don't know if it's from putting my arm on the desk like this all the time or what, but I, but I, I, have, I have all my shirts have got holes. I've worn them through on just on the one side. Most bizarre. Um, and you don't feel it, right, until you, it's wintertime, and all of a sudden you start saying, where's that draft coming from? Um, but, yeah, obviously holy, um, that's not what we're talking about, right? Uh, there's holes, yes, and then there's holy. Now we're working on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Luke's version, which is a little, little bit different than the normal one we're used to, which comes out of Matthew. The context is also different. Uh, in Matthew's Gospel, it's a longer, Matthew has a longer discourse on prayer, where Luke, the disciples are actually asking, teach us to pray. Which is one of the things they we really don't teach people. How does one pray? How does one talk to God? Now we can say that anything you say to God could be a prayer, right? Our liturgies that we normally use, those are just extended prayers. That's why at the end of most of them there's an amen. Let it be so. I, um, anywho, so, um, where was I at? Amen. Okay, good enough. Uh, yeah. Uh, but teaching us how to pray. We don't often do that. We, don't, we learn some um, acronyms like acts, uh, affirmation, uh, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. There are certain things you can utilize to, in a prayer life. And the, the Lord's Prayer is one of those things you can use as a basis for the prayer. But anytime during the day you're driving along and you speak to God, it's a prayer. Supposedly also, I heard years ago, that hymns are simply prayers put to music. And there are, we know there are many hymns that are very sacred to us, correct? There are certain hymns that just bring us back memories or fill us with certain joys or remembrances. We only sing Silent Night once a year, but when is it? 
And everybody truly hates that song, right? I mean, that is the one song, really, that when we start singing that, um, kind of a lot of memories. Uh, and for me, it is also the um, morning star. Right? That takes me back to my youth. Because <sighs> being Moravian, um, and of course going from uh, the places I've been, it's always, there's always been morning star uh, since I became a Moravian. And that takes me back to my younger days when I sang it. How many of you, when the, when the kids are up here singing it, think of the times when you sang it as a child? Anybody? Anybody willing to admit it, I should say, maybe? Bruce, did you sing it up in Sturgeon Bay? Atta boy. I'd have to ask Dina if she did. She probably did at some point. Um, but uh, I remember singing it with, uh, with Dave Simon, Tim Schwaffle, and Tim Hatfield. And we were all younger, so all our voices were like, ah, 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 ah. you know how young lads' voices are. They can sing beautiful soprano at that point. And then we all change, and our voices deepen. But holy, we're talking about holiness today, and we're starting out with Father. You notice it doesn't say our Father, it's just Father. Now, years ago, before I went to, before I went to college, I actually took a class at MATC, the old downtown campus, Remember that, where it used to be down there? And a writing class, and I did a paper on the Lord's Prayer. This was back in about 1981, 82. And there was a push to change the Lord's Prayer to make it totally inclusive language. Because there are people, when you say Father, that don't oftentimes have a good vision of Father. And so we, we have to, to change that because not everybody has the best relationship with Father. Two of the days that have been hardest for me at times over the years has been Mother's Day and Father's Day. Father's Day because of what I just talked to you about. Mother's Day, which, you know, we all think of those days as being those great days when we can all be filled with joy and talk about loving parents and all that kind of stuff, right? I had a young man back in Minnesota whose mother was um, Filipino, and after she gave birth to him, she abandoned him. She left him to her, his father, who was an army sergeant, who unfortunately, just before I moved to, to Altura, took his own life. And he was raised by his aunt because his mother didn't want him. So you think of, uh, talk about Mother's Day, of the, the loving, caring, compassionate mother, and yet that was unknown to him at that time. And Father's Day can be a little bit of the same, I guess, for some. It happens much more nowadays, I suppose, than it does for most of us. Most of us grew up with uh, mother and father, right? Mother, the caring, loving, compassionate woman, and dad, the hammer. Um, any of you ever experience father when you did something wrong? I mean, really wrong. Um, it, it's interesting that, you know, um, we kind of went away from some of those kinds of uh, attitude adjustments that we used to have, and yet most of us did seem to turn out pretty good, right? But I think that there's a difference between being a father, because anybody can be a father, but there's a difference between father and dad. Right? Well, I have a mom and dad. I only use father if I'm trying to make my dad angry. My boys will do the same thing. They go, father, you know. Um, but it's mom and dad. Mom and dad to me. 
But father here, as used by Jesus, constitutes a relationship. Whether you like it or not, each of us does have a father. You are aware of that. Those who went through biology in high school, right, you are aware you have a father, biological father. Someone who helped in your creation. In relationship, we also have with God. The one who created all things. The one who helped to create us. So there's a relational issue there, why, and that's why the word father is used there. Rather than, hey, Joe Blow. Right? It's father. Hallowed, your name be holy. Your name be hallowed. What does it mean to be holy? Now, I will let you know right up front here, that as a rule, you will never probably hear my name and holiness in the same sentence. I am not the pastors you remember growing up, right? Who when they walked up the center aisle, you were like, oh, right? I am a little different. I'm a little off. Part of that being is because I grew up from my 10 years of the, of the time when I was really uh, formative years at the church with the pastor, Bob Godis. Bob, one Sunday morning, and I didn't do it, I should have, but I didn't. Um, Bob, on a Sunday morning, comes up to the altar, because we had an altar and a communion table. He grabbed the offering plates, he turned this way, which is what the men's section of the choir was, and looked at us with this blank look on his face. And I'm like, what's that about? And he turns and he says, well, get out your money. Because he was apparently trying to think of some wonderfully flowery, esoteric uh, thing to say about the offering, and he lost it as he was turning, and he just says, get out your money. Now, do you wonder why I am like I am? But holiness, how many for you how many, how many of you grew, have, this is the place, this is where you grew up? A few of you, a lot of you. Is this a holy place? Is this a holy place? What makes it holy? Now there's an interesting question, right? What makes something holy? What makes a space hallowed? It is a place where we have encountered God. It is a place or a space where we have encountered God at some point. Now maybe it was at Christmas Eve, singing Silent Night and seeing the candles, and that just gave us a well, uh, uh, you know, overwhelming emotion. Maybe it was our confirmation. No, that's probably not it. Because uh, most of us, let's face it, right? We got, we got through confirmation. Um, but the very few folks actually go through that and are like, oh. Except maybe for Ada. Ada, I'm sure that you're that way, right, Ada? Thank you, Ada. Um, but we, but we really, there's those different times, right, in our lives that we are here. Maybe it's when a loved one, we said goodbye. Maybe it's when we got married. Maybe it's when we had our children baptized. There was some point where we encountered God. Now I can tell you that I have a number of places that are holy to me. Having grown up in DeForest um, at the church there, and I can tell you that every congregation I have served, I have encountered God. And, it, and it's not usually when I'm sitting here by myself praying, it's usually in the midst of people. That something happens where I feel the divine. 
but there's also other places. Um, there's a place up on the Mississippi River called Frontenac where I asked my wife to marry me. A holy place that we can't go to anymore because now it's private property. Um, there's, I, I go back to the old Baptist grounds. Give a shout out for the Baptist grounds where Bruce and I first met, where Bruce first learned to hate me. Uh, not hate me, just think I was kind of a, a loudmouth imbecile, which I'm not sure how much of that has really changed over these years, but, um, <laughs> but that's a holy place, is it not, Bruce? That's where I felt called to ministry. It was a holy place. I encountered God there. At Mount Morris, um, it's interesting that this last year uh, we had our synod there and um, someone made the comment that uh, why are we having it at a church camp when it's, I'm a 63 year old man sleeping on four inches of foam um, uh, and other things like that. And someone, someone said that apparently what's a holy place? And yes, it is for some, but, but, but I'll bet for about half the folks who came to Synod this year, they'd never been to Mount Morris before. So hey, they had never had an experience of God. So everybody's holy places are a little different. Because we've all experienced God in different ways. But at Mount Morris, for me, one of the holy places is the chapel out in the woods. Um, because I helped to make that. With the help of my buddy Virgil, and Mike Buss. Um, Mike Buss passed away 12, 13 years ago while out in the golf course. God bless him. Uh, Mike was a maybe a little bit older than I was. Uh, I went to his service. Mike was buried in a tie-dye t-shirt and a tie-dye bandana and it, it looked like Mike. If they put him in a tie, I probably would have tried to rip it off. But Mike um, was holy to me. Mike was the one who taught me, I'm a man. The world is my urinal. You would have thought your grandfather would have taught you that in the farm, right? No. And I'm sorry to insult your delicate uh, intricacies this morning, but... But those things make us holy, where we have touched the divine. And that chapel in the woods, for me, is one of those places because you're sitting there, if you've ever been there, there's some benches out there in the summertime, and the creek is running behind, and it's, it's a place. It's quiet, it's solitude. Now, people do experience God in different ways. You ever been a farmer, right? Farmers, I bet, experience God out in the field once in a while when you're doing things going along. I know when I was in North Dakota helping with the soy, or the, excuse me, the sugar beet harvest, at midnight, still driving around and seeing all the northern lights, which happen because you're so much further north in North Dakota. And plus, there's really nothing to stop it from the North Pole all the way to North Dakota. Um, there's nothing to block the light including trees, um, buildings, stuff like that. Um, but I can remember driving the truck and experiencing that. Perhaps you might experience it while you're out fishing, in a boat. I experienced it one morning on my family farm down by Prairie du Chien as I'm out freezing, because of course in late November it's cold I have orange on for a different reason. And I'm watching the sunset, the sunrise come up and thinking, my goodness, how great is God? God makes things holy. God makes us holy. As God speaks to us through Leviticus, you shall be holy to me. You. You. You shall be holy to me. God has made you holy. Does that scare you?
Because that means if we are holy, we need to be like God. Forgiving, compassionate, filled with joy. You are holy. God has made you holy. You have encountered God at some point in your life because that's probably why you're here this morning. Go out and help others find the divine as well. Be holy to the world. I know that's not easy, and we're certainly not going to do it all the time. We just try. You are holy to me. Would you please join me in prayer? Lord, there's been many places we have encountered you. And you make those places and spaces divine. Help us to see we don't always have to be in a sanctuary or in a special place to encounter you. It could be at any part of our day. It could be at any time. Simply make us aware. Allow us to comprehend that you are there, that you are working in this world. Lord, it is you. It is you that makes us holy. It is nothing we can do. It is nothing, it is not a place we can build. It is only through your divine touch. It is only through your, our experience with you that makes that place, that time, holy to us. Help us each day to see the holiness that is in our world and the holiness that you offer to all people. Amen. Would you please stand and join me in our closing hymn? Oh, oh, oh.
Please join me in our responsive benediction you'll find in your bulletin. May the love of God surround you. May Jesus Christ always stand before you, inviting us to know and follow him. May the Spirit give you wisdom and grace for the journey and rekindle our imaginations. And may the love of this community be like a warm cloak, shielding us from despair and keeping us strong in hope. Go, sorry, go now to love and to serve our Lord. Amen.